Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Hot chocolate, favorite book, gingerbreads and love in the air. Ah, I love Christmas. <gasps> oh, holy moly! I forgot to buy gifts. What should I buy for my little sister Susie? This or this? Okay, but wait. Why do I feel like I have to give presents during Christmas? For me, it's obvious that Christmas became a product of consumerism. Should I boycott buying gifts in my minimalist home? Sorry, child, but in this home we won't have presents. Don't cry, face reality. The world is a construct in which the richest people benefit from those like us during Christmas. I just wanted a doll that I dream of the whole year. You are the worst. In this episode I will share with you the story of gifts and I will give you some gifts ideas and rules that you can apply within your home. So take your hot chocolate and stay with me. The tradition of giving presents at Christmas has roots that goes back as far as the nativity story. Whereupon the three wise men gave gold, frankincense and mirth to the baby Jesus. However, the tradition of gift giving has earlier roots in the festival of ancient Romans. During the festival of Saturnalia, ancient Romans were given thanks for the bounty provided by the agricultural god Saturn. And during Sigillaria, they were exchanging gifts, such as candles and seasonal figurines. Etiquette dictated that the lowlier the gift, the stronger the bond of friendship. Now advertisement make us believe that the more expensive gift, the stronger the family bond. In 2022, consumers in the United States are expected to spend a large amount of money on gifts. This is evidence that Christmas is more about gifts and less about other values, such as religion and family. Often giving is less about the other person and more about us. I must buy this expensive phone for her because what will family will think of me when I will buy a cheap phone for her. I like the idea of having an authentic discussion about what the other person expects. You can set a specific budget in which you and the other person will uh, buy or make a gift. It works both when you don't have a lot of money and when you are rich. Simply you and your beloved person choose to focus on a different aspect of celebration. That way you can make your Christmas more about conversation and creativity. And by the way, write in the section below if you consider to buy something for your, uh, for your family for Christmas or if you avoid it or, make you, or maybe you have some cool rules within your family that you want to share. So there is the space and you can tap, tap, tap and I'm waiting. I'm really interested. Maybe you will inspire me. I like to change the focus and question what advertisements show. Now I feel like I'm forced by companies to buy gifts. Companies made us think, you love your wife, don't ya? Yes, I do. Well, prove it and buy this expensive ring. Now, do it! Buying for Christmas went extreme. During the Black Friday season, some people are hunting for gifts. They are hunting as a lion on a zebra. In this case, as a human on TV. People killing themselves to get a TV. Okay, what? What? This is what consumer is made with us. I found a newspaper from 1874 where we can find growing gifts culture. Almost 70 years later, the newspaper Toledo Blade is filled with Christmas gift ideas. It is a historical issue because in December 1941, Japanese planes attacked the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor. Even though we have this contrast, the war and Christmas presents. It's just very interesting when we look at it because we see how women's role was shaped by the culture. As we see, the advertisement culture of buying has been growing. Now the advertisement is extreme. It isn't the only newspaper that shapes the Christmas and gifts culture. It's your favorite influencer. Christmas vlogs, what to buy, where to buy. How many <laughs> The whole unboxing no content. No! No, guys! He got me the Surface laptop! Dude! How sick is that? Also, many family movies and TV shows are focused on showing the ideal Christmas with a tree full of gifts. Perhaps that's why we are aspiring to have a house full of paper boxes. We are trying to duplicate what we see, especially the moments when the family looked happy. And it's usually when they unwrap gifts. I remember when I was a kid and me and my friend wanted to buy uh, our family gifts. We couldn't find a job in bakeries, coffee shops because uh, no one wanted to hire kids. Uh, even though we found a job, 
it was snowing minus 15 degrees and it was very dark because we were doing it after school and we had to go to each of the staircase and leave the leaflet uh, on the doormat extremely exhausted and we were doing it to buy our family gifts we were kids who weren't questioning the culture okay we felt like we had to do it we wanted to have this American full house gift Christmas. Recently, my friend pointed out that my love language is giving. And it might be true because I often beg not for myself but for someone. In this case, I might also want to show my family how much I love them. In general, if your love language is giving, it means that you feel the best and most love when you are giving and receiving gifts. It manifests, for example, if you regularly do gestures like bringing someone a cup of tea in the afternoon. The love can manifest in all kind of ways. A cup of tea with my mom over dinner, baking cookies for my grandmother, checking on your friend and just asking how someone is doing. I think that the personal reflection is the best driver of a true paradigm shift. Now I believe that it's not what you bought matters. What matters is that you are with your family. Make this Christmas more about your family and religion, especially if you believe in God, if you are Christian. Make it about the, you know, the genuine connection. However, I wouldn't say give up Christmas present. I wouldn't avoid giving Christmas presents. The culture is different now, it evolves. But I think it's important to be intentional when it comes to presents because we have so much trash on the planet Earth. We live in ages of the overproduction and ecological catastrophe. So being intentional and not just buying as much as you can um, might be very helpful for the planet. We don't need more trash, okay? I prepare a list of inspiration what you can buy or make for someone for Christmas. Vouchers, simply as they are. Restaurants, spa, massage, coffee shop, travel, photo, many options. Of course, don't leave the voucher without a letter. Write something from your heart to this person. Notice people's passions, preferences and personalities when you are choosing voucher and you are writing a letter. Think of vintage clothes. I know that there is a standard in which we should give uh, new things or ask if someone is okay with uh, second hand but we should reverse it and ask if someone is okay with new stuff. Employees that work in fast fashion industry are treated very badly and the fast fashion causes many damages when it comes to environment. Perhaps if you buy vintage clothes for someone and this person won't be happy about it you can open a discussion about fast fashion and the environment in your house. Bake, make personalized gingerbread. If I knew that someone spent two hours in the kitchen just to bake a gift with my name on it, I think there is nothing sweeter than this. Just be, being present is a present. Practice mindfulness and try to catch your family's smile and happy moments. We often see that parents aren't there for kids anymore. It's like, oh, you start talking uh, again. Here is the phone. Just, just go. Just you know, I need some space. I have to, I have to have my own place. So just, just take the phone and go away. Or parents are talking to kids and the kids are 50% on the phone and 50% talking with the father. These days having someone full attention is one of the most beautiful gifts you can receive and give. As a minimalist for Christmas I don't want any items and this choice should also be accepted. In this case the talk is crucial. Hey mom, I know that giving is one of your love languages. I appreciate every effort and money that you put in each Christmas Eve, but I have everything. Communication is key. If it won't be respect, uh, remember that it's less about you and more about the other person that did the purchase, often because of the psychological need. And of course you can donate something that you receive and you don't want it. You can always donate it. Just to assume, media, companies, movies and our psychological needs shaped our perception of gifts. I wouldn't avoid buying gifts, I would just adjust them to their needs and context. I think it's a fun part of Christmas, but it's supposed to be 90% about the, you know, other values and 10% about gifts. A small symbolic gesture such as cookie should be appreciated the same as an expensive watch. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a dopamine shout, like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you so much for watching.